Slendermane, traditional farmer's bread, takes place during the Holy Roman Empire in the Middle Ages, where players live in a small village and they are farmers intent on baking and selling bread and gathering the right prestigious ingredients and using their artisan bakers to go about the different towns and sell bread. Now, of course, this is also during the time in which the Inquisition was around, so mainly things were done during the day and not at night. There were very specific people who could do things at night, and in this case, they were the specific bread makers and bread gatherers to get the ingredients and such. And in this game, you're playing two to four players, probably ages 15 and up, as well as maybe an hour and a half to two hours, and you're going along and gathering ingredients, gathering bakers, and creating the best bread you possibly can. This is a thick Euro style game in which players are going to be placing down workers onto lo locations and gathering specific actions in order to gather ingredients to then make and sell bread. And by the end of the fifth round, if you've baked the best bread, you'll have the most victory points and thus win the game. But be careful, the Inquisition is also after you and if you don't pay your penance you'll suffer great negative victory points so let's go ahead and take a look down below and I'll show you at the setup for the game Pandermain traditional farmers bread as well as how to play and then my review welcome to the Holy Roman Empire and as you can see there's a lot going on here but this is actually just a small town in the Empire and its main fixation is on farming and creating bread you're gonna be playing as one of the farmers that is going to be gathering the workers going to different towns and of course accessing the main city where the Inquisition lives gathering your loans which you'll have to take out as well as finding new bakers and ingredients to make the best bread you possibly can and in the game each player is going to individually start by selecting a player board which are these guys here selecting a player color which will come with workers will come with victory point markers and then you're going to have these reputation track markers as well as additional workers that you'll set over here on this track there's going to be the inquisition uh, as well as these little markers here which indicate your reputation with them the first place marker which will start here based on your family card's number so the lowest number on the bottom right will indicate who goes first second third and then fourth set aside the other extra markers over here on the side of the board there's also going to be a pool of certain resources such as money and a bag here which is going to have the ingredients needed to bake bread as well as bread on the opposite side of those ingredients there will be tokens like penance markers, which you'll gather if you're not doing so well with the Inquisition, as well as these little cross symbols, which will help you gain the uh, penance, which will let you go across the board and hopefully get past those nasty Inquisitors. There's some player references here, as well as your boards here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at these small boards. These boards here are the towns, and in the towns, you are basically going to be setting them up by taking the tokens from this bag and placing them randomly in these spots here. There are four spots that are basically going to indicate that they'll always be there as static. And these ones over here are going to be there from round to round, which will actually end up moving, which we'll talk about during the, the playthrough of a round. But in general, just go ahead and set up these like this. There's also pairs and or sets of cards here, and based on the number of players is what villagers you'll place in each town. But make sure it's the same villager, but different villagers for each town. So this villager is going to be the same in this town, and it's based on the number of players. This one, this one, and this one. They'll all have their own unique special abilities as well. After you've done that, your player board is going to have that family card like I was talking about. Go ahead and move your resources on this resource track, which everyone will get, based on the number, which will be indicated on the board itself, as well as gain the ingredients for your bread and any coins it might say on the specific family card, and place your workers next to it, which are the ones you're going to be placing down on this board here during the daytime phase. Do the same for both players. Each family card is different, and you'll get different ingredients based on the card, and it's fairly easy to see. Two water, four rice, one cheese, and zero milk, and you would place it like this. Ten monies, and uh, you also get one of these guys here. Oh, one more money for this guy. Oh no, it's, I got five here. That's fine. Then go ahead and look at this board here. You're also going to take this bag once again. You're going to randomly place the different ingredients for the bread over there. 
you're going to go ahead and take loan tokens and place them here and one will start out right here on the board and every single round you're going to include a new one but just start with one here this is the feudal lords deck where if you go ahead and sell uh, if you sell bread to him he'll give you this opportunity to buy from here and then these guys here these are the dawn markers or dust markers you'll be flipping these over and moving the inquisitor along the way but just set five of these up randomly it doesn't matter which one you set where you set as long as you put them in these five locations here as well as each player is going to get their, their reputation markers and put them in the middle here and it tells you exactly where to put them in this specific area here they'll be trying to be moving up and or down based on the types of bread you're going to be making throughout the game everybody's victory points will start out at five points and then go ahead and place the different types of cattle and or your carts over here uh, finally, they're going to be placing these little penance bonuses in each of these slots here. These are places that you're going to gain specific bonuses as your trackers move across the board here. And when you get to a specific space, you'll be able to take one of these and gain a specific bonus, which is very, very nice. Just like also, if you get to eight here, you'll be able to take an additional worker, which is always nice in a worker placement style game. And that's pretty much it. There's additional components, which I set aside because this is just the setup for two players. Uh, the very last thing is based on the playing order, the last player will get this little feudal word guy. Just go ahead and set him here. He'll be placed at the end of the round and there's also these little tokens which i'll talk about after we go through the playthrough or the explanation of a full round of the game we're going to explain the more complex version of the game so we'll give the, the the full advanced rules for you and then we'll come up and discuss my review of it time to talk about a round in pandermain traditional farmer's bread let's go ahead and start by placing this feudal lord out in any of the spaces and when you place them on a specific space, at the end of a round, players are able to sell to him bread, which they may or may not do the first round of the game because you're going to be gathering ingredients more than anything else. After you've done that, then the turn order is going to take place based on, like I said before, the family card. Green has the lowest, so green's going to be up on this track here. And thusly, we'll be starting, placing red here, and if there was more players, they would go down this track as well. And this is a worker placement game. So green would start by taking one of their workers of the four and placing them on any of the circles here that have a sun. Some circles are only going to happen during dusk and others can only be played. Uh, there's only certain actions where you can only place them at night, but basically just for this specific part of the game, daytime, placing them on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That's the main ones on this board here. And then there are ones over here for the villages when you sell bread. Let's talk about some of the spaces first before we go any further. If you were to place one on here, if there is a token here, you can gather this loan token and lose two victory points and gain six coins. The other option is you can just gain coins, or if you have an oxen, you can exhaust that for the round and gain three instead. This space over here is a dust action, which means you, you can place there, but you're not gonna get these specific resources until dusk happens. It lets you get two of any resource or three of any if you exhaust, exhaust one of these oxen as well. This space here, this space is going to have a cost up here and based on what you pay is what you can gather as far as ingredients go. There's a certain amount of ingredients you can have in your area here and this is the area which you'll store ingredients. So if you wanted to, you could spend one coin and take these two ingredients or you can spend two coins and take these three ingredients. Over here, this is where you're gonna get your artisanal bakers. These are the guys that are gonna craft you all the good stuff. Now, normally you can only build this orange bread, but if you gather these guys, they'll let you build things like green and or yellow bread, which are unique specific to them. And of course, they also have an upgrade ability, which you can choose to do as well if you are able to bake enough of their specific bread that they need to be baked. The first action is just to simply buy them for the cost, or you can spend one coin to upgrade them if they already have the prerequisites to upgrade them, which are gonna be two tokens, which are these guys over here. This space here is the trade area. You can either do one for one, so you choose one of these, and then you trade for another one of these. So I could trade one coin for one of any resource, or one of any resource for two milk, or one of any victory, one victory point for any of these one resources. Over here, this is baking bread. Baking bread, you can simply bake two bread, or if you exhaust one of these, you can bake three. And of course, this is going to have a cost based on the number of players that are before you, from zero to one to two. This space over here is the place in which you're going to gather ingredients. These spaces are free, and as you can see, the arrows here will present new and interesting benefits as you're able to exhaust certain things. So for instance, I could place here, I can gather these two resources and these two resources. I can place here and gather these two and these two. If 
I were to place on here, 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 or here, let's say this one here, I'd have to exhaust whatever it specifically asks for. Like this says it wants an oxen. If I exhaust an oxen, then I'm going to be able to get these resources. I can get these ones. And then from here, I can choose to go down this path or up this path. So obviously exhausting is better because you're going to get more resources than going over here for free. But if you don't have an oxen, well, then you can't get it. This space over here is where you're going to get all the oxen and whatnot. These are the oxen and cows and the carts. If you gather an oxen for four, you'd place it on your board. And whenever it tells you to exhaust, you will flip it over. And at the beginning of the next round, or when it says to, you'll be able to flip it back and use it again. Sometimes it will ask you to actually discard these tokens. And it's very specific when it says so. And usually it will say so on one of these little tiles here. Moving on, that's going to get you water. Or if you exhaust the cart, it'll get you four water which is going to be located on the board over here. This space over here is the Inquisition. You can place here during the day or night, and then you can pay the costs of each of these tokens or tiles, and you can do any number of them, one, two, or three if you can. And then you can get a penance. If you did all of these tiles, which was two coins, one of any ingredient, and a bread, it would give you five spaces to move up on this board here. One, two, three, four, five. And thusly, they would re refresh whenever you purchase them. If you didn't want to and just wanted to do one or two, those ones would refresh instead. This one will always be on the board. Moving up this track here, we'll gain you these, token, these, these things here if you get to them. The first person who gets there will choose one and put the other one back and gain the benefit. And so that way, there'll always be at least one for every player that does make it this position. The same will be said for this area here, which we already talked about. It will give you another worker for the next round. Then we'll come over here. Over here, you'll be able to give bread to these villagers. When you go here, you'll be able to choose the card as long as you're able to provide a, a bread for them. Each village will only have certain types of bread available during certain rounds. And in this case, you can pick any of these three. So if I had a bread, one of these guys here, being baked, then I could spend this removing one of these markers. So if these weren't here, I couldn't. And then gain the victory points for it. I could also gain victory points from this track here if there was any benefits. I gained the coins presented by that. And then I'd also gain points based on how stale it was. You could do this for any of these spaces here, but this one over here requires you to have a certain penance level. And these ones over here require you to have higher number of player counts. So this is a three and this is a four player game. In a four player game, you can have three people here, but in a single two player, in a two player game, you can only have a single space there. These spaces will be refreshed at the end of the round. And those are pretty much all the spaces you can go on in the game. There's quite a lot, but it'll come together as you simply start playing the game. So players are going to go around placing their markers down on locations and collecting any rewards, paying any costs, up until the point where all players have placed all of their workers. Keep in mind, certain spaces only have a limited number of meeples that can be placed on those certain spaces. Then dusk hits. When dusk hits, all of your workers that aren't these two here are going to go back to your player board. Do, 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 do. After that, you're going to go to night phase. And in reverse order of play, players are going to place one of their workers, if they want, because this is optional, on a space that has a night symbol on it. So these two spaces are good to go, this one, this one, but you obviously can't get ingredients and you can't do something like get a loan. There's only certain things during the night that you can do during the Holy Roman era due to the fact that the Inquisition is watching you. And so these are the spaces that you can interact with. If you don't want to, you don't have to. And every space is going to have a cost of plus one coin to do so. After each player has maybe chosen to maybe either bake bread or perhaps they went over here to pay their penance, that would end that specific night phase and you would move on to the dawn phase. In which case, you're going to flip over one of these guys here. This is called a penance token specifically. And this will move the Inquisition. The Inquisition can move up to three spaces. And after that is flipped, it's done. And then you're going to check to see if the Inquisition is behind players, next to them, or in front of them. If the Inquisition is behind those players, each player that's ahead of it will gain one victory point. If the Inquisition is next to them, they won't gain any victory points, but they won't lose anything. And then if the Inquisition is in front of players, those players will get one of these penance tokens. These, these are nasty things that they do not want. These tokens are going to give you negative victory points at the end of the game. So being next to or in front of the Inquisition is very important. After that has been done, you're going to go ahead and check to see if the game is over. 
at the end of the fifth round, the game will end. So if it's the t second, third, or even fourth round, you'll proceed to the next phase, which is going to be returning your workers. So you'll be taking these guys that you placed back to your board. You're then going to check to see if you have any milk, and if you do, it will spoil, so it will go to zero. After that, you will go ahead and reactivate any tokens. So any of these guys you might have, cows or the, the, the bulls or the carts here, if they're flipped over, you'll simply reflip them up. You'll add a new loan token out if one isn't present there. And then you're going to discard the flower and refill in each of these areas here. So these here, as well as over here. You'll take all of these out, put them in the bag, shuffle up as well as these guys here. And then you're gonna move these ones up in new spaces that they're gonna be at. And from the bag, place new spaces here. So that's basically how those guys work there. Uh, after that, you're going to go ahead and also check, I almost forgot too, during this phase here, in which you're gonna to check to see uh, if anybody has this during the dusk phase, in which case you can go ahead and give them those specific things there. But regardless, uh, you're gonna go ahead and move over to turn order next. This is the turn order to begin the game. However, if you go to this space, the first person to reach there is gonna actually be the first person to get to be first next round. The next player would go as well. However, if nobody else went here except for this specific player here, everybody else would just go in turn order into this track here. These would move off and then these would come and the new player would be in this position here. After that, you can choose to upgrade bakers. So if you have these guys, if you bought them from going to this space here specifically, you can simply go ahead and choose to upgrade them as long as they have these tokens on them. In order to get tokens on them, you have to bake bread. And you can only get one token for each type of bread they can make. Everyone can always make orange bread, but in order to make green bread or yellow, you're going to simply need to have a worker that's able to do that. And then when you upgrade them, it'll allow you to make brown bread. So making these breads will let you go ahead and flip this guy over and upgrade him during the specific phase. Then after that, you can go ahead and pay bakers. Bakers are gonna have a cost to them based on if they're upgraded or not. If you don't have the money to or don't want to, you can simply return them to the guild here. And if you do want to, you'll pay for the one or two bakers that you choose to have. Finally, you're gonna go ahead and check for the feudal lord and have him go back and have him placed out. And then you're gonna start again at the day phase. Players are gonna go ahead and place their workers once again and play will continue. That is pretty much the entirety of the game. The only thing I didn't talk about really is when you bake bread, it'll have a certain cost for ingredients. and It'll tell you here down below. You'll go ahead and then place a bread in either one of these categories here based on the type of bread that you made. If you made the bread based on what is required here, then you're gonna go ahead and get the good bread. If you didn't, then you're gonna get the bad bread. At the end of every round, bread is going to spoil, uh, so it'll go lower at the end of every day, and up to the point where it's just worth coins. And if you're able to sell them earlier, you'll get more victory points, which is fairly good, right? Additionally, baking good bread is going to net you higher in your reputation, because you'll be reputable for making good bread. If not, you'll go down this track here, which will signify that you made just basic bread, and you can actually lose points if you do that. Obviously, they'll get bonuses at the end of the game as you move up these tracks, like victory points or the ability to gain certain items. So it's very good to move up this track as well. Another thing to note is when you build bread, that is the brown bread, you're gonna get bonuses based on what I talked about before, which is gonna be your coins. So you're gonna get whether or not it's stale or not, and then you're gonna get points when you sell it to the track here. And you'll also get bonuses on the round marker. So the sooner you bake that bread, the more extra victory points you can get because it is the most difficult bread to make. And that's pretty much the game for Pandermain traditional farmer's bread. I think I pretty much explained it all. Hopefully it was fairly simple for you, but we'll come up and discuss it. I'll explain how it goes and how we played it and what you guys might think about whether you want to pick up this game up currently on Kickstarter. Let's talk about it. Pandermain traditional farmer's bread is a crunchy Euro style game. This is a medium to heavy style game in which you're going to be placing workers on a board, gathering resources. Resources will then be turned into bread. Bread can then either be expensive, nice and exquisite bread or the basic bread, which you will then sell to villagers based on the type of bread that those villagers want and based on the victory points you can gain from the bread. You're always gonna get money for the bread, but you're always trying to gather the most victory points you possibly can by 
by choosing the best spaces possible. However, your opponents are doing the same thing. Now, this game, you're obviously not intentionally always trying to sabotage another player, but sometimes the spaces won't be available that you want to go to based on other players choosing to go to those spaces. And you will need to strategically choose when you want to be first, what spaces you want to go to based on your turn order, and how you want to best use your ingredients, because things like milk will spoil. And also, choosing the specific cattle or carts you need will help you throughout the game, gathering new ingredients, gathering the ability to do certain things like trading easier, as well as gathering water or unique ingredients based on the dawn phase. So utilizing those tokens is going to be in your best interest. Every single player plays fairly the same. It's You're going to get a unique set of resources, which will change how you kind of play into the flow of the game at the start, but eventually you're going to work into the specific type of mechanical feel where you're like, I want this, this, and this. And the only way it's going to screw up is if this happens. Ah, it happened. Dang it, now i got to find a new way around the game. There is a lot of things to do and a lot of choices to make, but it's fairly simple as for how it works. Place a worker down, end your turn, you'll do that until the point where you basically need to go to the cleanup phase, and then you will rinse and repeat. But making those choices will affect the cleanup phase, and how and when you're going to get specific things. Like, dealing with the Inquisition is a very unique aspect to this game that I haven't seen done in a lot of other games, in which you're trying to race the Inquisition to stay in front of them so that they're not angry with you, all at the same time as getting points. And if not, maybe you're not using that Inquisition or church space as much, you're probably going to get better bread, but you're going to deal with the consequence of negative points because you're not making the church its your top priority. And if you don't do that, you're going to suffer. And in a lot of cases, it can be randomized to the point where the first round he'll move two or potentially I think he could even move three spaces. And in other times, they just simply move one or even two. There is a different uh, style for each game as to how the Inquisition is going to go. This game is a lot of fun. I think if you like crunchy Euro games, something just slightly less heavy than Lesboa, slightly more heavy than Francis Drake, with the feel of the Roman, small Roman town where you're building and you're creating bread. Uh, the theme specifically for me works really, really well because I love Roman games. I love anything in that era. I love anything that's pagan, pagan culture style things. And this really does well with that for me. I feel like the Inquisition is always watching you. And even though it's just a little small part in the game, because at the end of the round, you're always like, did I do enough? Did I give away enough to make them not hurt me? Because it can really be painstakingly dangerous. Or is that player going to go for this specific type of bread? Should I gather this baker? Do I need to move to this town? Will they have this type of bread that I need next round? And if so, will I be first because I went to the Inquisition? There's a lot to think about in this game. Definitely, definitely. Is the game difficult to understand? No, not really. Maybe after the first round, you'll pretty much get it, and you'll just have to remember how to do all the cleanup phase and the maintenance, but otherwise, fairly simple to play. Most players who like this type of game are going to really dig this game. I really, really enjoyed myself with this game, and traditionally, the these traditional style like heavier euro games are more challenging for me and i have to do it way and determine is this a game i'd actually play again and for this one here i definitely would especially with more players because it gives you more of a sense of urgency more of a sense of where you can place on certain things and yes the spaces do open up but you're still very aware of when bread that you want will be taken and how it will be taken i liked it two players as well no problem i had a lot of fun with that as well and i think for the most of you who like it two three and four player crunchy style euro game are gonna dig pander main the artwork in the game is spectacular I felt like I was part of like the specific space I was going to. I always had to think in my head, instead of you know like cubes on boards, where I'm like, ah, do I have to place on this specific board here and get these cubes and get that? I'm always thinking, do I need to go to the church right now and give them penance? I have to give them some of my ingredients, or do I want to actually make this exquisite yellow bread? and then turn it into this town over here to gather this specific villager, which will give me this specific unique ability to make more bread, to gather more milk, which is really nice. That's a big thing I look for in these type of games. Like, do I feel like they're just pieces, or am I actually interested and intrigued by the different pieces and how they work and what they are? As well as what my opponents are doing and how their play style will affect me later on throughout the game. This is a lot of thought put into this game. You could obviously see there's a lot of time and a lot of love put into this game, and because of it, it shines through a lot of the other Euro games I have played previously. Uh, one thing I can say is it's fairly long, and for people who are newer to gaming, it's probably a pass for you. That's 
straight up something that's going to be a little more challenging. But if you've played a game that's a Euro, you've played a worker placement style game, this is one that you can easily pick up fairly quickly. The component quality is really nice for a prototype. This looks really good. The box cover looks really good. I'm excited to see what it finally looks like because this is a prototype and what you see here is not what you're probably going to get in the full game. But what they presented to me here is really nice and it goes to show what it's going to look like later on, which I'm very excited to see and I hope I get my own copy. Overall, a solid Euro game, something I would strongly suggest for people that are out there that like this type of game. If you're interested, I definitely suggest go to the Kickstarter campaign, look it over for yourself and see whether or not it's something for you to pick up. For me though, solid game, really enjoyed it. All right guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment. It does greatly help, we do greatly appreciate it. Everything you guys do to give us some type of push in the algorithm is very, very much appreciated. We do videos pretty much every day, except for Saturday and Sunday, and even sometimes still then. We have a live stream every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST where we give away free games, and you can join us and be part of that community. It's a lot of fun, we enjoy ourselves, it's on Facebook. Facebook on our page. Down below you can check that out. This game, Pandermain, it's so weird. You're making bread in, in, in the Roman Empire during the Inquisition. Such a bizarre theme, but it really worked for me. And I don't know, I, I was kind of not expecting that. I was gonna think it was kind of, I thought, oh, this might be kind of boring. And even though I like the specific type of thing, maybe I'm not gonna dig it, but it, it just it just worked. And I think that's what really gave it that extra mark for me. Check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, a Kickstarter list to show you all the new and latest greatest ga games on Kickstarter, where you don't have to go on Kickstarter and search them up yourself, they'll just be there for you. As well as check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com, The Giveaway Geek, and my friend Ferdinand, The Cardboard Stacker. They do a bunch of videos and giveaways and great stuff on their sites. If you want to, you can go ahead and check out their stuff. We do think you should. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to making some traditional farmer's bread in the Roman Empire, during the Inquisition, and avoiding the other farmers with you next time.